During the making of my documentary feature film, The Story of Action Man, I posed a question to Palatoy's former Action Man brand manager, Jeff Maisie. Hasbro produced a Japanese Imperial soldier for their G.I. Joe brand. Why didn't Palatoy ever produce a Japanese soldier for Action Man? No, I think what we wanted to do was keep away from any um, unpleasant sort of conflicts. Somehow the Germans was, uh, it's difficult to say this, but you always felt that the German side of it was a more conventional war where it's quite okay to bring out a stormtrooper because kids were familiar with that. But a Japanese soldier, I think, was with all the connotations of the war that that brought with it, we never thought we'd do that. We never wanted to do that. Admittedly, both the Germans and the Japanese were guilty of some pretty horrific things during the war. And this got me thinking. Palatoy may have shied away from producing a Japanese soldier, but they did release their first German stormtrooper in 1967. Can you imagine the backlash if a company attempted to sell a toy Nazi to the youth of today? There would be public outrage. But back in 1967, there wasn't an outcry. In fact, the German Stormtrooper went on to become one of the most popular Action Man outfits of all time. Over the next 18 years, Palatoy would produce more outfits for the German military than any other nation, except, of course, for Britain. Because Action Man was, after all, a British concept. So why were the Action Man German uniforms so popular with so many kids? They certainly ranked among my favourites. I'm Tony Roberts and welcome to an Analog Toys special feature with the Action Man German Army. Originally released as part of the Soldiers of the Century line, the original German Stormtrooper outfit was first designed for Hasbro's G.I. Joe, but after making a few subtle changes, Palatoy adopted it for their Action Man range. The first release of this uniform included a tunic with insignia that denotes a German artillery unit. The German Stormtrooper was armed with his Luger pistol, two potato masher grenades, and a 9mm MP40 machine pistol. One mistake the toy designers made though was the inclusion of ammo pouches that were designed for use with the KAR-98 rifle and not for his MP40 machine pistol. Finishing out his uniform, the Stormtrooper also had his distinctive helmet which featured the German Eagle holding the swastika and his Iron Cross Medal for Gallantry. With his elegantly tailored uniform and finely crafted weaponry, it's easy to see why this vintage Action Man uniform went on to become one of the most popular of all time. The whole range of Action Man Soldiers of the Century proved to be extremely popular, so Palatoy continued to release the uniforms into the 1970s with subtle changes and renaming the range the Soldiers of the World. In the 1970s, the Russian infantry and Green Beret uniforms were dropped from the range and were replaced by the French Foreign Legion and a German staff officer. If further proof of popularity were required, Surely the inclusion of two different German uniforms in a range that only featured six uniforms in total is evidence enough. The German staff officer was the first new rank to be enlisted into the Action Man German Army and was a fantastic addition to the Action Man range. At some time during the 1970s, Palatoy decided that the offensive symbol of the Nazi swastika should be dropped from the German Stormtrooper's helmet, so later editions featured the German Eagle and a blank space where the swastika used to be. This politically correct decision to remove the swastika is in stark contrast to the release of the next two Action Man German uniforms. The packaging for the Action Man Escape from Colditz series was, in my opinion, some of the greatest artwork ever produced for the Action Man range, and it was emblazoned somewhat controversially with a bold swastika. The complete set included the German sentry complete with sentry box, the camp commandant and the British escape officer. The Escape from Colditz series was a wonderfully designed and ingenious addition to the Action Man German Army and provided kids with an adventure-filled scenario to play out in their backyards. Throughout the decade, Palatoy took note of how well the German uniforms were selling in toy stores. So in the late 1970s, they ramped up production to include a wide variety of new German uniforms. In 1979, Palatoy released the now very rare German Africa Corps soldier. This uniform originates from the North African campaign of World War II. This is also the first time a German soldier was issued by Palatoy with the KAR-98 rifle, which finally corrected the ammo pouch mistake from 1967. This uniform also came with a distinctive German helmet in a desert yellow camouflage. 
but kids could also get a variation on this uniform from the Action Man Internationals range that featured the German forage cap instead of the helmet. Palatoy also made plans to produce an Africa Corps officer's uniform and got as far as producing a well-detailed prototype which featured in Palatoy's 1981 trade catalogue, but sadly the prototype never made it into toy stores. When combined with the German motorcycle and sidecar, the Action Man Africa Corps squad is visually striking and made for an extremely imposing enemy unit. The ranks of the Action Man German Army were growing rapidly as Palatoy released even more uniforms in the early 1980s. Two updated variations of the original German Stormtrooper were released, with the last issue Stormtrooper being different in almost every aspect, from his new injection moulded flexible PVC webbing, to his KAR-98 rifle and lightweight trousers and tunic. Another very distinct variation on the German Stormtrooper was Hitler's Shock Trooper, more commonly known as the German Paratrooper. Palatoy released this uniform as part of the Internationals range, which included the uniform only with no extra equipment, but this gave kids the freedom to customise the German paratrooper with their other Action Man weapons and accessories. In 1981, Palatoy released the German Panzer Captain, followed in 1982 by the German Armoured Car. The German Panzer Captain featured an exquisite all-black uniform that was stunningly tailored and proved yet again that the Germans were some very snappy dressers. Finally, the last German uniform produced by Palatoy in 1982 wasn't technically a member of the Action Man German Army. He was actually the only enlisted member of the Action Man German Air Force, the Luftwaffe pilot. This was another gorgeous Action Man uniform produced by Palatoy. But unlike the Panzer Captain who could command his German armoured car, the lack of a German fighter plane made the Luftwaffe pilot fairly redundant which is why he now ranks as probably the least popular of all the different Action Man German uniforms. The size and extent of the range of German uniforms produced for Action Man by Palatoy is quite simply breathtaking. But I haven't answered my original question. Why were these uniforms so popular with the kids of the era? I think this fascination stems from the German propaganda of the time. The German military intentionally promoted a look of polished steel and ultra-modern design. The Nazis, no matter what one thinks of them, were sharp dressers, and their weaponry was sleek and deadly. They may have lost the war, but they looked damn good doing it.